Yo, what's good, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another reaction video. We got re what really happened to Randy Moss's son. The mysterious downfall of Thaddeus Moss. Let's check this out. When that, that 2019 season ended, Thaddeus Moss, the son of Randy Moss, made one of the worst decisions in his life. Well, he What's do. crazy about this is I remember hearing that news when it came out, and I was like, wait, what? Why would he do that? Wait, what happened? This is Randy Moss, one of the greatest wide receivers to ever play the game of football. Yes, sir. But you already know him, though. The know best wide receiver no of all time. Needed. This is Randy Moss's son, Thaddeus Moss. What's really interesting was decent is for um, LSU. Didn't even know that Randy Moss had a son, and even if they did know he had a son, they didn't know that he was also really good at football. Similar to his father, Thaddeus, he played on the offensive side of the ball, but he wasn't a wide receiver. He was a tight end. Ooh. Pretty good one at that. Don't want to take my word for it? Okay, that's fine. In the national championship game only a few years ago, he had two touchdowns. But ever since that championship game, Thaddeus Moss has vanished. And this is one of the more mysterious situations and stories I've ever covered on the channel. Yeah, the last this? the last thing I heard about him, you know what I'm saying? Um and he was in the US the USFL last season, I believe, with um the Birmingham Stallions. I think that's the last up. thing I heard or about maybe him. They should add up. Then like he's fell off the face of the earth since then. There's one thing for sure though, it's definitely weird, odd, strange, whatever word you want to throw in there, to see the son of a legend fall off the grid and nobody knows where he's at or what he's doing. Yeah. There's many questions people have been asking about this guy even till this day. But however, it all circles back to the one. And I mean the one big question we're going to try to get to the bottom of in today's video. What really happened to Thaddeus Moss? Yeah, Sarsky. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hope all of you are having a great and fantastic day. If not, I, I hope this video can make it a little bit better. It's a tiring and, and day, man, I'll tell you that. Miss. He can't miss. Hot as shit Yet today. again, Bama Frauds with another video recommendation. Greatly appreciate my man for leaving this comment. It seems like he's a staple of the channel at this point. If you guys have any video requests or recommendations, feel free to leave a comment down below. And who knows? We might make that video. Your boy Matt is a fan of the people, and I want to give the people what they want. It's as simple as that. W. I want to make content that you guys want to see. And yeah, that's all there is to it. Strap in, buckle up, get your snack, get your popcorn, get your favorite meal you like to eat when you watch a video. Because trust me, I do the same thing. But all right, Matt, blah, blah, blah. Shut the crap up. Now, that's right. I don't. <laughs> Bro, I love it. I love his fucking intro, bro. That oh, shit yeah, is so hilarious. Oh, you forgot to throw in there as well. If you enjoy the video, consider subscribing. Now, let's get on to <laughs> This dick is hilarious, bro. Woo! Man, oh man, we got good old Thaddeus Mawson. Come on, man. You already know, to get into his story, we gotta throw it all the way back to where things started. Mr. Okay. Thaddeus Moss played for a plethora of teams throughout his high school career. Started out at Boone County High School in Florence, Kentucky, then transferred to West Virginia. After that, he went to Lincoln High School in Rhode Island. Damn. After that, he transferred to Victory Christian Center High School. God, and damn, last but not least, he finally transferred to Mallory Creek High School. Which, for those of you who don't know, that is crazy. located that's in That's probably the just a flat Carolina. jacket that's making him look like that. I'll show you some of his like highlights that. right here. He's at the bottom of the screen, and he's going to do his best white Randy impersonation and Moss in the back of the end zone. How about that? I'm going to run this back for you guys one more time because this catch, it's worthy of it. And I think it goes to prove that, yeah, he definitely had the genetics and the DNA of his father, Randy Moss. 100%. If that wasn't enough for you, how about this catch right here? You can't just say, oh, yeah, he had one good catch. That's two Damn. back to back. The first two, in my humble opinion, were amazing. But this one might top them all. Another Ooh. fade route in the back. Ooh, the little toe tap, opinion, too? Were amazing. But this one might top them all. Another fade route mm. in the end zone. And somehow, some way, he gets his right foot tapped into that back corner. I'm going to continue to show you some of his highlights here in the background. I think they speak for themselves. Also, okay. doing some of the video clips, you're going to see him lined up on the defensive side of the ball. All in all, I think we can oh, agree that here. One yeah, going off yeah how the fuck he catch that shit? Level, it's clear, it's evident, the dude possessed some serious talent. Yeah. To go on top of that, I'd say he was fairly athletic and he had pretty good size. As a senior in high school, he was already listed as six foot two, two 230 pounds. Mm, was I wish fastest, I was six foot two. Biggest or strongest guy on the field at all times? Absolutely not. He didn't do one thing great, he did a lot of things good. For that reason, he was only a three star recruit and ranked 386 nationally and the 17th Damn. best tight end in his recruiting class. That may catch some of you by surprise, and I understand why, and I'm not going to act oblivious to the fact that, yeah, normally when you're the son of a legend like Randy Moss, you're going to get a higher ranking, and people, they're going to overhype you. Nepotism, yeah. not just in sports, but in life, it's a normal thing, so don't act brand new around here. However, with that being said, in this case, as an example, you can make an argument in state coming out of high school, at least, 
that Thaddeus Moss was underrated, if anything. He was really good in high school. He had offers from Georgia, Florida, Alabama, the oh, number shit. one team in college football the past 15 years, North Carolina, NC I ain't State, even know that. Miami, See, I wasn't Arizona even watching State, college football Oklahoma, like that back then. Florida State, and the list goes on and on and on. Ultimately, though, to make a long story short with his recruiting process, he kept it fairly simple. He stayed in the same state and committed and signed with NC State. You could say things didn't go too well at NC State because he didn't play too much. As a true freshman in the 2016 season, he only caught six passes for 49 Damn. yards and had one touchdown. At least he touchdown. got a touchdown and out I of it. I want to make this clear. It's not like something bad happened at NC State. It just wasn't a good fit. So yeah. he leaves NC State and he announces that he's going to transfer to no other than the LSU. LSU. But, and I have a big but, you better believe this, there was one big problem with this. He was going to have to sit down the season. The transfer portal, like we all know and love, that's in effect currently, it wasn't into effect back then. Oh. We still have what I guess you label as the old school rules of you got to sit out one year, then you can play. So for that 2017 season, there's not anything to say whatsoever. He's at LSU, but he had to sit out. Fast forward time into 2018, he can play this year, but unfortunately, he suffered a major foot injury and missed the entire Damn. season. You want to talk about an unfortunate circumstance? That's the definition of it. Yeah. You don't like to see an injury period the end, but if he were to sustain a foot injury like that, you much rather him done that in the year in which he had to sit out regardless. For but real. that didn't happen, and here we are. It's two years since he's transferred from NC State, and he has nothing to show for it. I don't think a lot of people quite understand, not just the mental toll, we'll get to that in just a second, but the toll it takes on you physically when you're not playing for two seasons. When you miss Shit, one take, year, hey, it's hard take to Calvin catch up Really, for instance, but bro. Two, but he was still able to eclipse over a thousand missing yards. Missing anywhere from two to three years as a college athlete, that's like a mini retirement at that point. Because even for Michael Jordan, in that short stint he retired, he even talked about it in the Last Dance documentary, it took him a while to get back up to game speed because he was so out of shape. Granted, mm. Michael Jordan's playing offense and defense every single minute of the game, whereas in football, you're not doing that. You're playing one side of the ball. So it is a little different, but you can apply the same principle. There were some worries about, okay, he hasn't played in two years. Is this guy going to be ready when he finally does get healthy? Finally, fast forward time here into the 2019 season, Thaddeus Moss, he makes his return. He had a quiet start to his season, but in the fifth game against Utah State, in which LSU won 42-6, he had five catches for 39 yards and one touchdown. Against Alabama in that huge matchup with Joe Burrow versus Tua Tungvaola and all those NFL I think they players won that game the field, too, LSU. Thaddeus Moss had six catches for 46 yards. And that's pretty much This was the year they um, won in that year, right? He never had this huge breakout game for 200 yards. 12, 13 catches, it was nothing like that. He was always a guy where you can mark him down in the stat sheet with anywhere to two to six catches per game, and he was going to have around 40, 50 yards. You also do got to take into account that was that legendary season in 2019 for LSU with Joe Burrow and those outstanding wide receivers. I would like to imagine that with Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson. They Damn, are these all the fucking time. passing yards? Holy shit, and I don't Joe mean Burrow. That in a bad way whatsoever. That's just the reality of the situation. This there nigga did not throw for, for under 300 yards. They also had Clyde Edwards, Alaire Jr., who in my humble opinion, was one of the most underrated backs, not just for LSU, but in the entire landscape of college football. I remember watching Edwards Alaire Jr. run over Alabama players. That okay, dude was bro, a real gotta, deal. I feel like he's not getting a that, fair bro. shake in the NFL, but I did want to give him his flowers. Heading into the playoff with a matchup with Oklahoma looming, LSU and Thaddeus Moss, they're sitting at a very pretty 13-0. This is when Joe Burrow, and this might be understating it, would light up. 63 to 28 defense. is crazy. What Joe Burrow did to that defense is a different video for almost a different 500 day. yards. 45 seconds, it doesn't do it any justice. Damn. So I'm not even going to get started on that. However, I do want to share this. Thaddeus Moss in that game against Oklahoma Jefferson had four catches for 99 yards, almost 100, and one touchdown. They could when not guard Jefferson, game, bro. I'll get to that in just a second. But I do want to talk about this a little bit. This stat line right here, it goes to prove it and goes to show that Thaddeus Moss wasn't some scrub a dub dub. I mean, this was a real legit ball player. I don't care what anybody says. You don't just have random Joe Schmoes making big time plays in college football playoff games. Would LSU have won the game against Oklahoma if Thaddeus Moss didn't play in it? Yes, of yes, course. Yes, they were because but Jefferson would lighten what he them did. up. In the next game against Clemson, LSU, we all remember they beat Trevor Lawrence in yeah. that one in which Thaddeus Moss had another good performance. Does slightly get overshadowed by Jamar Chase's whopping nine catches for over 200 Damn. yards and JJ Justin Jefferson's nine catches for a buck 06, but. That is Moss, five catches, 36 yards, and two touchdowns. Yet again, it goes back to this. Would LSU have won the game if Thaddeus Moss didn't play? Yes. yes. More than likely. 
With that being said, though, he still made an impact in this game and a big one at that. Having two touchdowns in a national championship, that can't go unnoticed. At this point in time in our story, things are great for Thaddeus Moss. Had back-to-back -back great college football playoff games. And on top of that, can't forget to mention, he's a national champion. That's what everyone dreams of being. Very few people walking well, this planet Earth can say, hey, I'm a national champion in any sport. But however, with all that shit, great I'm stuff I'm going to be a national said, champion that this year, nigga. When season ended, when that Thaddeus Moss, the son of Randy come Moss, on. May one of the worst decisions in his life. What do For you do? For some odd reason, after that year in 2019, as a junior, Thaddeus Moss declared for the NFL draft. Mm. What's crazy about this is I remember hearing that news when it came out, and I was like, "Wait, what? Why?" Would yeah, that was that? yeah, that was a big mistake, and that was that. Well, this was his first year, like fully starting too, right? Like where he played all all the um games of the season and shit like that. Yeah, that was a big mistake. He should have he should have came back for another year, just like what Emeka Buka is doing. You know what I'm saying? He dealt with injuries last year, and then, you know what I'm saying, he's coming back this year to try and um, improve himself. That. It made zero sense back then when he did it. Until this date, in 2024, it makes zero sense now. Yep. I can't emphasize Damn, enough man. how much I didn't understand He basically it, and screwed I up his career just like that. Day. He only played two years of college football, guys, two years, in which combined, he didn't have over 700 receiving yards. The only, and I mean the only thing I can even assume about this, and if you know any information about it, Please fill us in in the comment section. Fill me in in the comment section. Is he had the wrong people in his ear? Yeah. I am going to assume, just going out on a limb here, spitballing, is you had all these agents and people telling him, oh, yeah, dude, you're the son of Randy freaking Moss. Yeah, Randy, Randy Moss should have talked to him about that shit, bro. Told him to stay back another year and work out with him and shit like that, Pick bro. You up in the second Randy Moss should have been talking sure. to him about These that. same people are telling him, oh, yeah, man, well, you had a good year at LSU. You just won a national championship. Sure, you didn't. I put wouldn't up call 570 yards a like good your buddies year. Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase, but they're going to see the potential and they're going to draft you based off of that. That's the only thing that adds no. up to me. And I also wonder if his dad encouraged him to enter the draft as well. He probably did because I believe if his dad told him, "Nah, son, you're not ready. You need to know your college football." Nah, bro. But like, bro, if you're a dad and you know, like, if you know that your son is not ready to enter the draft, bro. Like, t like, let's say, well, like, Deion Sanders, bro, he knew Shador was not ready yet, so, you know what I'm saying, told him to stay back another year. Like, that's exactly what, what Randy Marsh should have told him, bro. Because he was far from ready from, from being in the NFL. More than likely and it showed. The draft. Who knows? Him coming out early is one of the most bizarre decisions I've ever seen out of a college football player. I'll show you his numbers in that 2019 season so you get a better perspective of what I'm talking about here. He had 47 catches for 570 yards and four touchdowns. That's it. Even if these numbers were to look something around the range of 80 catches, 1,000 yards, and 10 touchdowns, I still don't think it would have been a good decision to enter the draft. Mm -hmm. I could sit up here all day and talk about how blasphemous that decision is. The bottom line is, he did it. He entered the draft. Most of your NFL scouts in the mock draft had him listed as a day three guy. If you don't know what that means, he's going to get selected in either the fourth, fifth, sixth, or seventh round. To nobody's surprise though whatsoever, he wound up going undrafted. Damn. And what I say <laughs> wasn't to nobody's surprise. Everybody viewed it as this. Holy oh yeah, shit. Thaddeus Moss. He didn't get drafted. Ah oh, yeah. Well, and didn't it makes total sense. I think I think the Commanders, well, the Redskins at the time, I think they He's signed him to too as an undrafted free agent. That's how most people was looking at this. However, the Washington football team, yeah. they did give him a call and they signed him as an undrafted free agent. But before we get into all that, oh, they were the what a scout Foster had to football say about team Thaddeus at the time. Moss I forgot about undrafted. that. Because a lot of people thought the son of Randy Moss would at least get a shot in the fifth sixth or seventh round quote unquote here's what the scout said multiple team sources say that medical, medical concerns, concerns around a foot injury Ooh. and durability played a role in moss going undrafted they also said that size was an issue for the six foot two 250 pounder as that is very short and lacking length for an nfl tight end another team said that it hurt moss that he didn't test before the draft and they felt he was slow with a bad body but a good player at the college level wow damn wow bro. wow wow that's what do tough. Think about that? When you break it down, it did make total sense. He had that foot injury. That was a major concern. He also wasn't this big or explosive guy like we talked about in high school. Yeah. It comes down to this, though, and I think this was the final nail in his coffin for a lot of these teams. They felt he was slow with a bad body. That, to mm. me, was the one dilemma with Thaddeus Moss. What, he got a dad bod or some shit? He didn't have the body frame of an NFL tight end. And I hate it for the guy you really do because he was a good football player. There just wasn't anything special about him. And to be a professional football player in the NFL, 
you got to be special in something. Yeah. You either got to be a speed demon, an absolute unit of an offensive lineman, or have a golden arm as a quarterback, something like that. That is the beauty of it, though. If you are only great at one thing, or a great you separator as a wide receiver, just good at a lot of things. It's kind of like basketball. For my young guys out there watching, if you can just solely learn how to shoot a basketball, you're going to see a lot of success in your career at the high school and collegiate level if you get to that point. One of my old AAU coaches told me this. There's always going to be a spot for a shooter on any and every team. Do as you please with that information. Getting back on track here at Thaddeus Moss, unfortunately, yeah, teams weren't too high on him, so he did go undrafted. The Washington football team picked him up, and not too long after, in 2021, he was waived. He was yeah. claimed off of the waivers by the Cincinnati Bengals in April of 2021, and this reunited yeah, I, I him remember with former that. teammates Joe Burrow and... He didn't even play a game, I don't, I don't think. Similar situation, though, to the Washington stint. He wasn't with them for long because they waived him in August of 2021. He did sign Damn. to their practice squad right after that, and that's where he stayed for a while. Fast forward time here, and this is where it starts to get ugly for Thaddeus Moss. In September 2022, he was waived, not from the Bengals team, but the Bengals practice squad. Yeah, I think it's safe Gosh. to say that's almost the bottom of the barrel, getting away from a practice squad. That's, that's tough. Uh, that's tough. He didn't give up, though. I got to give him a lot of credit and a lot of respect. Yeah, he went to in the Stallions. In April 2023, he signed with the Birmingham Stallions of the USFL. Giddy you would up. think he might start to see some success with a team. Somebody might give him a shot. But the Birmingham Stallions, mm. similar to all the other teams he played for, they waived him in December of 2023. Here recently, though, at the end of February in 2024, so our current year, Moss signed with the Hamilton Tiger Cats of the, the CFL. If you don't know what the CFL is, that's nah. the Canadian Football League. Uh, Unfortunately, of course, though, nigga, overseas it feels now. Like this is the endless cycle here. He got waived in May of 2024. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> Damn! Oh man, bro, you got a, hey, bro. That one decision to him for him to enter the draft after just one year of like fully starting that shit just ruined his whole career, bro. That's tough. I waved my apology. He was quote unquote cut in the first round of training camp. And here's a oh, really recent fuck. update for you. Officially on May 13th of 2024, Thaddeus Moss. He retired from football. Here's Damn, bro. That is Moss about his retirement on his Instagram. And this is the only thing oh he's posted gosh. over there. I'll show you his Instagram right here. It's the only picture. Quote, unquote, it is always important to know when something has reached its end. Closing circles, shutting doors, finishing chapters. It doesn't matter what we call it. What matters is to leave in the past those moments in life that are over. Mm. Thank you. Hashtag retired. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Clap it up, clap it up to Thaddeus Moss, man. That's getting me emotional because I can relate 100% and I have a ton of empathy for him. As a former athlete myself, yeah, it's one of the hardest things realizing that your athletic career is coming to an end. And I think a bunch of us watching this video, if you were a former athlete like myself and like Thaddeus Moss, you can relate to it. As a kid growing yeah. up, all you knew and all you did, it was play sports 24-7 nonstop. You're traveling to different states on the weekend, whether that's for travel, baseball, AAU basketball, all sorts of things like that. I used to play if football. you're not playing in different states, you're practicing with your team. If you're not practicing with your team, you're practicing in your yard. It's an endless cycle. There's always something to do and always something to work on. And one of Ooh, the hardest damn. things to come to terms with is knowing, dang, I don't have the juice anymore. And... My time's up. That's Speaking tough, of juice, bro. ironically enough, somebody left a comment stating still got basically what I was saying. Juice Damn, left. bro, that's tough. Absolutely nothing left, brother. Damn, where you got to feel for Thaddeus Moss, honestly. Absolutely nothing left, brother. And a lot of people won't understand that as well because when you give the game everything you got or everything you had, there's no regrets and that's it what i'm most impressed with that is moss's story and journey and i don't want this to go unnoticed i really want to be a focal point of this video that he never gave he up didn't get in any off the field troubles off the field problems whatsoever. that is interesting if you don't make it as an athlete it needs to be for a reason like that is moss's and i hate to say this but it's a cold harsh reality and true this situation you're just not good enough. That should be the only reason. You don't want to be the guy who was a five-star recruit, had all the talent in the world, and you threw away your career because you couldn't stay out of trouble. That's the worst. Because yeah. then as a man, when you go to sleep at night, you got to live with regret. And that's one of the worst things out there because you're playing the what-if game. What if I didn't get in trouble? What if I gave the game 100%? Stuff like that. However, in this situation, Thaddeus Moss, he gave the game everything he got. Bro, that he got nicked up, banged up with injuries in football, playing the NFL. 
It wasn't in his story. It wasn't a part of his life. As to what yeah. Thaddeus is going to do next, I have no idea. Like I stated, he just retired last month. It's actually been less than 20 days as when I'm making this video. Mm. I don't know if he wants to continue to be in the sport of football, maybe with coaching or something like that. But if he does want to pursue that, hey, I think he'd be good at that. And I'm wishing the best of luck. If he doesn't want to do Not that, real, that's bro. totally fine. Whatever he wants to do. And if that good luck to him, though. someone's seen this video, Wishing you the best of luck, brother, and I hope you see a ton of success. Before we end up this video, though, let's talk about this. Why didn't it work out? Why wasn't Thaddeus Moss a successful NFL player? I think the answer to that question is relatively simple. We talked about it only a few minutes ago, so I'm not going to hold you here too much longer. Scouts and teams were worried with that injury problem he had to his foot and also didn't have great size. Yeah. That's all there is to it, in my humble opinion, at least. It wasn't <laughs> an issue where he didn't want to work hard. It wasn't one of those things where he couldn't stay out of trouble. It was none of that. He wasn't as gifted as his father. You hate to see it. I'm curious, though. Let me know your thoughts down below. But uh, Hey, man, what do you guys think? I, I just, you know, I feel like he could have still been, like, he could have been a good NFL player if he would have stayed just one more year at least at LSU, bro, in college football. Maybe he would have had a breakout year, but who who knows, bro? We never we never will know what would um have went down, bro. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make you guys like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Turn on my post notifications to get notified when I drop a little banger video. One road to 200 subs. Let me get there for more banger NFL content like this. Without further ado, I'm out. Gang!